Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Lois. I'm glad you called. I will be able to make it tonight. No, you heard right, Angel. I've given up being a private detective. I've retired. Yeah, I'm going to learn to take it easy if it kills me. Once again, the adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Dirty Dollar. According to the World Almanac, New York is the city of churches. But you'd never guess it from my business. Instead of peace and quiet, all I've known is violence and death. Well, I've had it. No more playing cops and robbers for me. No more dealings with offbeat characters like Johnny Stone and Steve Haynes. Oh, in case you're curious, those are the two gentlemen getting out of the convertible on Forsyth Street. They're bookmakers' bookies which means they take layoff money. Bets other gamblers are afraid to handle. I guess you might say they live dangerously, which often makes me wonder how they're going to die. Listen, Johnny, maybe you better let me handle this. No. I don't like the way you look. I don't like it either, Steve, but what can I do? You know what I mean. Now, supposing I... I said no, Steve. I'll take care of Mr. Dollar myself. This the place? Yeah, Certainly doesn't believe in putting it up front, does he? That you, Lisa? I was just getting ready to... What's the matter, Paul? <laughs> nothing, nothing, except this is a surprise. Isn't every day you get to entertain your boss? I suppose that's true. Shut up, Steve. Well, say, why don't you, why don't you sit down? No, thanks, Paul. We can't stay long. Well, uh, well can I get you a drink? Mm-mm. You sure you wouldn't care for something? Now that you mention it, maybe I would. If it's all the same to you, I'll take... How much is it, Steve? $2,568.23. Huh? Well, that's the way we figured it. I don't understand. You've got sticky fingers, Paul. Unfortunately, you got them glued to my money. Wait, you're wrong. I, I've worked for you for nine months. Did, did I ever once get out of line? There's always a first time. I give you my word. What did you do with the I money? I think I that... know, Johnny. Our friend, Mr. Dollar, is a student of the racing form. I see he picked Gallant Kid today at Hollywood. Is that how it went? I was going to return it, Johnny, honest. You never should have taken it in the first place. I trusted you, Paul. I don't let anyone abuse my confidence. Oh. <laughs> get up. No. I said get up. Let me go. Now, I'll give you 24 hours to make it good. Let $2,568.23. And I uh, want it to the last penny. Just a second. I said just a second. Is Mr. Stone in? He's asleep. Where is he? In there? Now, look, lady. Get your hands off me. You nuts. Now, get out of here before I... Hey, what's going on there? Nothing, Johnny. Go back to bed. I can handle this. No, you can't. 
So you are Johnny Stone. That's right. Well, this is a great... Hey, what's the idea? I wouldn't do that again. Why? Would you beat me up, too? Look, sister... Who are you? Lisa Dollar. Oh. You recognize the name? I believe my husband works for you. You got your tenses wrong. He did work for me. How could you do such a thing? How could you hit a man half your size just because he stood up to you? But you're not used to that, are you, Mr. Stone? What? You're used to people falling all over themselves to cooperate in your crooked deals. Is that what you think? That's what I know. But you don't frighten me. I've met men like you before. Bullies who always pick on someone weaker. Listen, sister. Shut up, Steve. Anything else you care to say? No, I think I've said enough. You just keep away from Paul. You are never to go near him again. Do you understand? I understand. Are you going crazy or something, Johnny? How could you take that, especially that slap in the puss? Forget it. Forget it? I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it with my own eyes. That Paul must have really sold her a bill of goods. I guess she must trust him. Kind of nice, isn't it, Steve? Huh? Being able to believe what someone tells you. I don't get you. It's not important. Did she say her name was Lisa? Hey, you feel all right? I feel fine. Get the car. I'm going out. Without me? Without you. What's come over you, Johnny? I don't know. Maybe I'll have a better idea after I talk to a friend of mine. Now, get the car while I change. Yes, sir. Can I help you? Mike Waring around? Well, he's kind of busy at the moment. Where is he? In the back? Look, mister, he gave me strict orders. He wasn't to be... Hey, come back here. Don't you understand English? I said come... Hello, Mike. Well, if it isn't Johnny Stone. I was thinking about you today. Must be mental telepathy. Well, I'd ask you to sit down, but you anticipated. Drink? No. Don't let that stop you. It won't. How about doing a little gum shoeing for me? <laughs> Haven't you heard, Johnny? I've retired. I heard, but I don't believe it. It's true. I've had it. I've had much too much. What are you talking about? This business of being a private dick finally got to me. They told me it would. You're not making sense. What are you, 36, 37? In this racket, you age fast. You see people at their worst. Guys would stab you in the back for two bits. Even with inflation. Yeah, and sometimes you even feel sorry for some of them. Especially when you find out what makes them tick. You must be bathing in lanolin plus. You're getting soft. I never claimed to be in your league. But that's the story. Now suppose you hear mine. I hope it's more interesting. I had a boy, Paul Dollar, working for me. He's married to a girl named Lisa. Well, so far it ain't. I'd like you to find out everything you can about her. Johnny, you're not receiving me. I told you I quit. Why don't you get Martin Kane? This Lisa seems to be quite a gal, Mike. <laughs> she slapped me. You sound like you enjoyed it. I did. You better watch yourself, Johnny. You're acting almost human. And that would never do? Never. Well, see what you can find out about it. Look, I told I you. I know you're retired. But, Mike, you're a betting man, aren't you? So? So I believe all women are alike. They're only out for one thing. I'll give you a thousand to one. This Lisa Dollar is no different from the rest. Well, I'd be a sucker to refuse those odds. Okay, Johnny, keep your checkbook handy. You got yourself a bet. Taxi. Oh, taxi. Oh, yeah, where to, lady? 1427. Oh, just a second. I hate to repeat myself. Oh, mister. Who, me? Yes, in case you're interested, I'm going home. Why would I be interested? Well, you must be. You've been following me for days. Oh, I'm slipping. I guess I was right to retire. Who are you? Mike Waring. And why are you doing this? Well, let's just say that... Hey, uh, will you people make up your mind? Either you want a cab or you don't. He's right. Mind if I join you? What? Well, you want to know why I'm making like a bird dog? All right. Thanks. Okay, driver. Let's head uptown. I'll tell you when to stop. I don't know why I'm doing this makes absolutely no sense. You're curious. And you're a private detective. Well, let's say I was a private detective. Was? Now, skip it. I admit I'm acting like one now. You're working for Johnny Stone, aren't you? What makes you say that? Just a feeling I've got. Well, you're right. 
Peculiar boy, Johnny. He's very interested in you, Lisa. I'm overwhelmed. You should be. Johnny's got a very low opinion of mankind. Guess he's been burned too often. And your husband gave him a hot foot, too. What are you talking about? Why do you think Johnny slapped him around? Because Paul wouldn't cooperate in some crooked gambling scheme. Uh-uh. Paul got his hand caught in a till. Now, just a moment. That's not true. Look, Mrs. Dollar, I've done a little investigating. It's happened before with Paul. Once in Des Moines, another time... Yeah, but that was different. Mm -hmm. Well, there's one way to convince you. What's that? Your husband's IOUs. He owes over eight grand around town. How did you get these? Johnny made him good. I told him if it ever happened again, I'd... You'd what? Never mind. I hope your Mr. Stone is pleased with himself. No, this wasn't Johnny's idea. He didn't mean Driver, to... Driver, will you please stop? Now, look, Mrs. Dollar. All right, now, either you get out or I will. Okay, Angel. Thanks for the ride, anyway. Sorry you didn't enjoy it. Okay, buddy, take the lady home. you, Lisa? Yes, Paul? Where have you been? You said you'd be home by five. I guess I'm undependable. But then so are you. Why did you do it, Paul? Why'd I do what? Lie to me. I lied to you? There wasn't a word of truth in that story you told me about Johnny Stone. I made a fool of myself. Honey, I swear... Oh, I... don't deny it, Paul. I saw the IOUs. You've been gambling again. Oh, Lisa, I'm no good. I don't know why you put up with me. I'm not going to. What are you doing? I'm leaving. Oh, no, you can't. I won't let you. I swear I'll never do it again. Please, please get out of my way. I know I've said it before, but this time I mean it. I couldn't live without you. Lisa, please don't do it. It's no use, Paul. We've played this scene for the last time. Just give me one more chance. You won't be sorry. Please, darling. You know how I love you. No, don't, don't, don't. don't. I'll make it up to you. You won't ever regret it. I... I... I've got to have time to think it over, Paul. But you'll be back. Say you'll be back. Let me go. No. Not until you promise. All right, Paul. I promise. One way or the other, I'll be back. Now let me go. Hello? Is that you, Trudy? Yes. This is Paul Dollar. Is Lisa there? Oh, no. Now, you got to tell me the truth. Have you seen her? Well, she was here, Paul, but she went out at 9 o'clock. Did she say where she was going? No. She promised to come home, but it's almost 11 now. Oh, don't worry, Paul. I'm sure she's all right. You're lying to me. She is there. No. Please, Trudy, let me talk with... <laughs> talk to... What is it, Paul? <laughs> Paul! They say a dollar doesn't go very far these days. Well, this one was going nowhere. Two hours later, they had his wife down at headquarters. When I waltzed in, Sergeant Corbett was finishing his pitch. It's a lovely bit of salesmanship. Now, you've got to understand, Mrs. Dollar, I'm your friend. Thank you. No, I mean it. I don't blame you at all. Why, anybody in your place would have been fed up years ago. Your husband was no good. He was weak. Well, it's the same thing. No, it isn't, Sergeant. Paul meant well. He just couldn't help himself. Well, the point is... The point we... is, he's trying to trap you, Lisa. Well, if it ain't that high-flying bird, the falcon. I thought you retired. I have. I just dropped by the kibitz. Obviously, you know the lady. Obviously. How are they treating you, Lisa? All right. Why don't you tell them the truth? We're just getting ready to beat her when you walked in. Have you booked her? Yeah. The charge is murder in the first. Now, if she tells the truth, she might get off with 10 to 20. I have. I didn't kill my husband. You were going to leave him? No. Your bags were packed. I've been packing and unpacking them for the last eight years. And when you got fed up playing mama, you murdered him. Isn't that a little drastic? She could have divorced him. Maybe he wouldn't let her go. Oh, for Pete's sake, Corbett, Excuse why... Excuse me, Sergeant. Is it necessary that he stay? Well, not if you don't want him. I don't. Now, look, Mrs. Dollar, I want to help. After all, this is partly my fault. Come again? 
Well, I was the one who told her that Paul was up to his old tricks. How'd you find that out? I was doing a favor for a friend. Who? I'm no name dropper. You're forgetting something, aren't you? Concealing evidence in a murder case is a little more serious than passing a red light. You don't have to tell me that. I thought maybe it slipped your mind since you retired. Now, who's the guy, and why did he want you to check up on Mrs. Dollar? It doesn't have any bearing on this. Oh, doesn't it? it supplies a whole new motive. Suppose this man was in love with her. That's ridiculous. You know who he is? Yes, Johnny Stone. Oh, thanks a heap. Haskell, get a car ready. I want to pick up Johnny Stone. You're making a mistake. When I need your advice, Mr. Waring, I'll come and get it. Now, why don't you find yourself a park bench and wait like Barney Baruch? <laughs> Hi, Johnny. Oh, Mike. Come on in. Well, I see I got here before Sergeant Corbett. Come again? He's on his way. What are you babbling about? Well, haven't you heard? Paul Dollar was murdered. So what's that got to do with me? Well, this may come as something of, of a shock, Johnny, but uh, you're a potential suspect. When was the last time you saw Lisa Dollar? Why? Because the police are inclined to think you two might have had a romance cooking. Oh, they're crazy. I only saw her that once. And that's the time you fell. I didn't fall. And why did you ask me to check on her? Oh, let's just say I was intrigued. No, well, you say it. I wouldn't attempt to sell that to Corbett. Did you kill her husband? Mike, why should I? Well, you know human nature. You might have figured she'd never leave Paul as long as he needed her, and that would be forever. Well, you know a little about human nature yourself. Do I impress you as the kind of guy who'd let a woman take the rap? Why not? You're late. How did you get here before me? I got connections. I know a motorman on the Lexington Avenue Express. Well, it ain't funny, McGee. All right, Johnny, get your coat. Is this a pin? That's what it is. Now, let's shove off. Well, it's about time, Mike. What? Uh... Hold it. Don't move. You've blown your cork, Steve. Just stand still. Okay, sit down. Thanks. You won't think me nosy if I ask what's the idea. I just heard the cops picked up Johnny for Paul Dollar's murder. And you think I had something to do with it? No one else knew he was interested in that dame. She did. You're lying. Okay, have it your way. I'm gonna. He didn't kill Paul. Well, since you seem to know so much, who did? Me. Well, why don't you say something? You want to turn me in? How far would I get? You mean the gun? Forget it. Here. Huh? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Relax. Why did you do it? What difference does it make? We're going to ask you that at the headquarters. Okay. I was a lush till I met Johnny. It was 14 years ago. He straightened me out. I swore someday I'd make it up to him. And he told you he wanted Paul Dollar knocked off? He told me nothing of the kind. It was my own idea. I got eyes. I could see he went for Lisa. No, it won't wash, Steve. The cops will never buy it. Why not? I'm handing him a confession. Yeah, that's just the trouble. An unsubstantiated confession to murder is worthless. There has to be at least one outside piece of evidence linking you to the crime. Is this the same gun? No, I, I got rid of the other. Where? Down at Coney Island. Huh, that's pretty vague. Well, you couldn't expect me to make a map of the place. No, that's no good, Steve. I tell you, I killed him. I'm still waiting to be convinced. I shot him twice. That was in the papers. It was a 38. Likewise. Look, you've got to believe me. Johnny had not... Wait a minute. How would it be if I dug up a witness? You mean there was one? Yeah. Where didn't I think of him before? Who? Never you mind. Just set up a date for us at headquarters. I'll meet you there in 20 minutes. Steve. What's the good word? Is Cokie Myers around? He's in the back. Thanks. What do you want with that crumb, anyway? Just be a good fellow and see we're not bothered. Well, that's you, Doc? Sorry to disappoint you, Cokie. Oh, hi, Stevie. Uh, if you're looking for more, No, he... I'm looking for you. Yeah? Smoke? Uh, thanks. I got a job right down your alley. Ah, you better get somebody else, Steve. My nerves are shot. It'll pay a hundred bucks. What? A hundred clams. You could do a lot with that kind of dough. No, no, it's no use. I'm sick. If you could hold off a couple of days, maybe... I can't. I... Suppose I made it two bills. When would I get it? Right now. 
I guess I ain't so sick after all. Start counting out, fella. You just got yourself a boy. Hi, Sergeant. Huh? Oh, what did I do to deserve this? Nothing. That's why you should be grateful. Steve, come on in here and bring your friend with you. Come on, Cokie. Yeah, right, Steve. Hey, does this look like the Y? Why don't you find some other place to hang out? Quiet. Steve Haynes, Cokie Myers, Sergeant Corbett. Glad to know you. Hi. Haven't we met before? It's possible I work for Johnny Stone. Oh. Can I see him? His lawyer sprung him 20 minutes ago. Oh, that's swell. He'll be back. I wouldn't make book on it. I got Paul Dollar's murderer right here. You what? Okay, Steve, that's your cue. I did it, Sergeant. I killed Paul. Why? Well, now hold it. Don't you think we ought to have a stenographer in here? Why waste his time? Look, lunkhead, this isn't a rib. We've got everything, including a witness. All right, Cokie, tell him what you told me. Okay, uh, where do you want me to start? Right at the top of the page. Well, last night around 10.30, uh, Steve here came to see me. It seemed he wanted somebody to drive him. So? Uh, so uh, we took his car and I ran over to Forsyth Street. He got out and he told me to keep the motor running. About uh, five minutes later, he was back. Uh, there was a gun in his pocket. How do you know that? Because uh, uh, while we drove down to Coney Island, he got a screwdriver and took it apart. And then what? Uh, well, uh, we parked in front of Steeplechase and uh, walked down to the beach. Never mind the rest. Let me congratulate you boys. That's a lovely story. If you put it to music, you might have another South Pacific. Why, what's the matter? Don't you believe it? No. I tell you, I killed him, Sergeant. And Cokie's your witness? Yes. How much did you pay him? I resent that. You don't remember things so well, do you, Cokie? I get by. Well, what time did you get to Paul Dollar's place on Forsyth? Uh, around uh, five minutes of 11. Well, then how do you account for the fact that at 9.30 last night, a Cokie Myers was picked up for vagrancy on Chambers Street and wasn't released till one in the morning? Oh, no. Oh, yes. You were right to retire, Mike. Only your timing was off. You should have done it a week ago. Now, all you phonies, clear out. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, there were no two ways about it. The Falcon had done it again. After Sergeant Corbett unveiled his haymaker, I watched him toss Steve Haynes and Cokie Myers out of the office. His footwork was beautiful. Then he turned on me, but I jabbed him off balance. I demanded to see Lisa Dollar. I always say, if you're short on brains, gall does just as well. Oh, I don't know why I'm doing this. Because you love me. Yeah, your regular store-bought doll. Haven't you got it through your thick skull what this is? Suppose you tell me. Another Snyder Gray case. The two of them teamed up together to murder her husband. Oh, you're crazy. Johnny only saw her once. <laughs> that was enough. Mrs. Dollar. Yes? You got company. Hello, Lisa. I don't want to appear ungracious, Mr. Waring. But you could do without me. Exactly. Now, you've got to believe I've been trying to act in your best interests. Why? You are not being paid. And that's just the way I want it. It doesn't jeopardize my retirement status. Did your husband have any other enemies? No. You sure? He'd embezzled before. And we'd always made the loss good. I'll do it this time, too. I don't see how. I'll manage it some way. I told Mr. Stone he wouldn't lose a penny. You told Johnny that when? Right after I discovered Paul had lied to me. Yeah, what'd I tell you? She's been seeing him all along. Do you remember the time, Lisa? Yes, it was 9 o'clock. The clock was striking when I left Trudy's apartment. Who's Trudy? Her girlfriend, the one who reported the murder. But how could she... Hey, wait a second... I see it now. Let's go, Corbett. Where? Don't worry. I'll lead you there by the hand. Don't go away, Lisa. I'll be back for you real soon. Hello, Steve. Oh, hi, Mike. Sergeant? Hi. Johnny home? No. Mind if we wait? What do you want with him? Oh, I just dreamed up a couple more questions I'd like to ask him about uh, Paul Dollar's murder. I tell you, I did it. Oh, no. Let's not have that again. All right. So I got Cokie to perjure himself, but there was nothing else I could do. You wouldn't believe me? Maybe Trudy could help you out. Who? The girl Paul was talking to when he was killed. There was no girl. Oh, you mean on the phone. Haven't we had enough of this nonsense? 
Must be Johnny now. Hi, pal. What's going on here? Well, you're just in time to offer congratulations. Steve finally made it. Made what? The chair. And he did it the hard way. What are you babbling about? Well, Corbett, who reported Paul's murder? I told you, a girl named Trudy Bergner. Well, if she didn't live in the same building, she must have heard the shots on the phone. That's what I said. Don't you see, Corbett? That piece of information wasn't released to the papers. No one but the killer could have known it. Why didn't I think of that before? Steve, you crazy fool. Why did you do it? I... I always wanted to do something for you. You know, to make up for all the swell things you did for me. When I saw how you went for Lisa, it came to me. You're not sore, Johnny? No. No, I'm not sore, Steve. And everything worked out fine. All right, fellas, let's go. Tell me something, Mike. Just between us girls, you were kind of lucky, weren't you? No, I told you right at the beginning Steve was our boy. I figured if he was willing to confess to murder for Johnny, he might very well have gone whole hog and committed it. I still don't see it. Well, what's so hard? Johnny was Steve's god. All his life, he's wanted to prove his devotion. Well, when he thought Johnny wanted Lisa... He tried to get her for him, even though it meant killing her husband. That's right. You think he's crazy? Well, what do you think? Well, he certainly was sane when he planned that killing... He covered his tracks so well that when he confessed to save Johnny, he couldn't prove it. Uh, isn't that a beautiful hunk of irony? But then the whole case was loaded with the stuff. You think Johnny wanted Lisa? But didn't he? No, I doubt it. I think he just admired her. Yeah, I'll give odds you're wrong. I know human nature. He won't stay away from her no more than you could quit this racket. Don't you kid yourself. I have. Maybe so, but I'll lay eight to five. I see you next week. Good night, Mike. Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Iris. Oh, you'll have to include me out tonight, Angel. I'm leaving for Vienna. That's right, Vienna. City of wine, women, and song. Now, there's a combination that's bound to be murder. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the vanishing visa. They say people are the same the world over. It's only the places that are different. Well, I guess whoever it is that does all this saying has a point there. You take the bar of the Hotel Imperial in Vienna. The boy behind the mahogany is a citizen named Al Romano. And to prove my original thesis, Al could hold down the same job in New York. Come to think of it, he once did. But you'd never guess it from his approach. All right, honey. That'll it be. I would like a brandy, please. One brandy coming up. How, how much is it? Fifteen shillings. Fourth, then. Here you are. Tough when a doll like you has to buy her own. Maybe you'd like me to introduce you to a couple of rich tourists. Oh, I would very much. What's in it for me? A hundred shillings. Uh, I'd rather work on a percentage basis. How about a 50-50 split? Agreed. Yeah, I think we ought to do okay. What do they call you, honey? Trudy. Trudy Brownheim. I don't know you, Trudy. I'm Al Romano. What made you try the Imperial? A friend of mine recommended it. Uh, Mr. Stephen Lorimer. You a friend of that bum? You know Stephen? Why, he's practically a fixture around here. He's in the back room now. I must say hello. Oh, you're wasting your time. You'll get nothing out of that lush. Now, wait a minute. I'll be right out. That's you, Al? No. Oh, truly. Hello, Stephen. 
I've been looking all over the Ringstrasse for you. Uh, How do you know I'd be here? Aren't you always? Come to think of it, I am. I wonder what there is about this place that fascinates me. I couldn't possibly guess. You got something for me? Yes. Well, wait till I lock the door. Okay, let's have it. Here you are. Hey, this looks good, Trudy. Real good. Who are your contacts in Romania? You should know better than to ask me that. Sorry, I lost my head. Yeah, I bet the boys in the Kremlin would give plenty to get their hands on this information. Okay, I'll see it gets to the right people. Oh, a drink? No, thank you. Tell me something, Stephen. Why are you doing this? Why are you? Austria is my country, but... A man without a country, huh? I didn't mean that. It's all right. You didn't hurt my feelings. It's true. But then why are you doing it? Maybe I'm trying to justify my existence. Maybe this way I can kid myself into believing I'm not a drunken bum. You mustn't say that. Why? Does it frighten you? Why should it? I might give you away. Never. I'm weak, Trudy. Real weak. If the comrades got their hands on me, I'd crack in a minute. I'm not worried. Well, I am. I hear Mr. Vaughn's in town. Robert Vaughn? Yeah, Kozlov's right-hand man. I thought he was in Budapest. Not according to my dope. He's here, all right. Monocle and all. Like to meet him? Maybe I can arrange an introduction. should not joke about such things. Makes you kind of nervous, doesn't it? Putting your life in the hands of a lush... Stop tormenting yourself. You are one of the finest men I have ever known. Let's not kid each other, sweetheart. It's much too late in the day. Uh, Are you expecting someone? No. Who's there? Mr. Lottermann? Who wants him? I doubt whether my name would mean anything to you, but it's Robert Vaughn. Stephen. Give me a match. i got to burn this stuff. Please open up. I should hate to cause a disturbance. Take it easy, fella. You'll last longer. Listen, Trudy, there's a door behind the screen that leads to the kitchen. But what about you? I can take care of myself. Now hop to it. Oh, really, Mr. Lottermann? I said just a second. Well, what are you waiting for, Trudy? You afraid I'll give you away? No. I'll feed us in, Steve. I'll feed us in. I said, old man, if you don't open this door within five seconds, I shall be compelled to... Uh, 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 on. Let him on. Who's uh, got a key for this room? I have. I don't argue. Just use it. Uh, oh, uh, no. Well, don't stand there like a bloody fool. Get a doctor. Sure, sure. He's, he's wasting his time. There was a girl in here. Who was she? Come on, man, speak. You're missing the point, Vaughn. That's, that's why I did this. So I couldn't speak. Imagine. She trusted me. I guess she knew what she was doing. Oh, well, never mind the doctor. He's dead. Hello? Is that you, Tori? Who is this? What is the matter, Liebchen? Don't you recognize the voice? Oh, Eric, Eric. I'm so glad you called. Are you going to be home this afternoon? Uh, no, no. As a matter of fact, I was just leaving. I've got to go to Liebnitz. My Aunt Bertha's very ill. You needn't spare me, Trudy. I know that you are planning to run away with that American. What are you talking about? You must take me for a fool, huh? Don't you think I've seen you with that Stephen Lorimer? You followed us? Many times. How dare you? I love you, Trudy. No one's ever going to take you away. I wouldn't be too sure. I would. Your friend, Mr. Lorimer, committed suicide. What? Obviously, you haven't seen the paper. I don't believe you. I will read it to you. Shamed by his country's warmongering tactics, Stephen Lorimer, expatriate American, committed suicide this afternoon in the Imperial Hotel. It's a lie. They're using him for propaganda. Then why did he kill himself? I can't tell you. you. You've got to trust me, Eric. You know that I love you. If you do, you will prove it by waiting. I'm sorry, I can't. Hello, Trudy. Trudy! Yes? You Mike Waring? That's right. My name is Leon Brill. I wonder if you could spare me a couple of minutes. I got a proposition for you. Business? Yeah. Sorry, Mr. Brill. I've quit the racket. Come again? I'm no longer handling private investigations. Well, that's swell. What? 
I'd hate to feel I took you away from anything. So why don't I sit down? Huh? Well, I can think of one good reason. You're not staying long. Oh, I might surprise you. Now, you were one of Donovan's cloak and dagger boys during the war, weren't you? Well? Your serial number was 9823476. On your first mission, you parachuted into Yugoslavia. Second mission, Austria. How the devil did you find that out? Oh, I'm one of the kids myself. Like to see my credentials. Oh, what do you know? I know you're going back on active status. Now, wait a minute. You can't do this to me. Can't we? Oh, yeah, I guess you can. All right, now, here's the pitch. You're going to Vienna. What? We've arranged passage for you. You'll leave from LaGuardia tomorrow morning at 6.45. You'll be in Paris on Thursday, Vienna on Friday. Now listen, Brill. Now, you're to register at the Imperial Hotel. We've made a reservation for you. Oh, thanks a heap. My pleasure. Now, you're to contact a girl named Trudy Braunheim. You got that? I got it. She'll be waiting in the bar at the Imperial on Friday at 1 o'clock. She's a blonde, about 5'3", blue eyes, a little birthmark on her right cheek. I just pretend it's a casual pickup. How do I sell myself? I just tell you from New York. She'll reply she's a co got a cousin in Milwaukee. You answer that's practically a suburb. You got that? You I catch? got it. Uh, yes. Now, all you got to do is get her out of Austria. Get her out? Are you crazy? My psychiatrist doesn't think so. How am I supposed to manage that? If I knew the answer, I'd do it myself. Maybe she could fit in that hole in my head. Well, that's an idea. But we're not fussy. Any way you want to work it is okay with us. Just get it to the embassy in Paris. Mm -hmm. Any other practical hints you care to offer? Yeah, look out for Robert Vaughn. Who's Robert Vaughn? He's the boy the Reds use as a troubleshooter. Sounds English. Now, don't bother to find out. Just keep out of his way. If you get caught, you're on your own. We'll have to disclaim you. I understand. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to throw you to the wolves. Uh, thanks a million, Brill. Well, don't mention it. Uh, have a nice trip, kiddo. We all got to go sometime. On the highways, speed is the number one killer. It takes more than half of the lives lost in traffic accidents in many states, according to the Association of Casualty and Surety Companies. Last year, speeding drivers caused 15,000 deaths in the United States. That year, more than 500,000 persons were injured in automobile accidents blamed on excessive speed. Slow down for safety's sake, and you'll be doing your part in the current campaign against the number one killer on the highways, speed. Initiate and support your local enforcement drives against speeders. And remember, drive as though your life depends on it. It does. <laughs> Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. I don't know why people are so good to me. Take Leon Brill. Two minutes after we met, he was sending me to Vienna. 72 hours later, I was dodging cars and bicycles on the Ringstrasse. And I glanced at the clock on the corner of Stefan's Klotz and realized it was time to keep my appointment with Trudy Braunheim, so I hustled over to the Imperial. I parked myself on a stool, made a deal with the bartender. While I bent my elbow, he could bend my ear. I'm telling you, buddy, give me this town any time. You can have New York. Well, right now, I just want to have a Smirnoff martini. Do you know how to make it? You take four parts vodka. To Look, one fella, you're talking to Al Romano, the greatest bartender this side of 42nd Street. Oh, my mistake. You're not around here. Just got off the plane this morning. Then maybe you can tell me something. How are the bums doing? Uh, they're out in front. Oh, I knew the giants would fall. Just don't have it, that's all. <laughs> How long you been here, Al? Since the war. Ever think of going home? What for? The shilling goes a long way here. Back home, I was just a punk. Here, I'm a big man. Mm -hmm. You must know Vienna pretty well. Yeah. Interested in meeting a chick? Oh, I don't know. There's a blonde that drops by every once in a while. I could set it up for you. Real doll. Her name? Hello, Al. Well, speak of the devil. Hiya, Trudy. I was just telling this gentleman about you. Well, how nice. You two ought to hit it off real swell. I'm sorry, but I'm expecting a friend. Oh, won't I do? Perhaps some other time. Oh, I always say there's no time like the present. Uh, why don't we try that table? No, thank you, really. Come on, Angel. Please, you're hurting. Now, don't be like that, Trudy. I want to tell you all about New York. You are from New York? Yes. Would you like to go there? I would like it very much. I have a, a cousin in Milwaukee. That's practically a suburb. So you're the one. I'm the one. My name is Mike Waring. I'm sorry, Mr. Waring. I did not know. How could you? Hey, Al, how about serving us here? Sure thing. Well, you got any ideas? How about what? How we can get out of the country? I think it would be better if I remained. Look, Angel, that's not for you to decide. The powers that be think it's too dangerous. 
I suppose I rent a car and we try to bluff it through the border. But I don't have a passport. I got a couple, complete with visas. You're going to be Mrs. Michael Waring. You got a small snapshot? It's no use. They would recognize it as a forgery immediately. You got a better idea? No. Then we're stuck with this. Now, here's what I want you to... What's the matter? Don't look now, but we're being watched. By whom? A boy at the bar. He's wearing a trench coat. Okay, you can take a peek. He's moving off. Oh, Eric. You know him? Yes, it's Eric Hoffman. Who is he? A very dear friend of mine. You think he followed you here? I'm afraid so. Could I tell no, you? No, absolutely not. Those are orders. Where do you live? Leopoldstadt. Number six, Vorgartenstrasse. That's across the Danube Canal? Yes, it's right near the left bank. All right, worst comes to worst, I'll swim over. Okay, Angel, get yourself packed. I'll pick you up in an hour. Now, where did I put that? Who is it? Just Eric, Trudy. Open up. Just a moment, Eric. Hello, Liebchen. What are you doing here? I just dropped by to wish you a pleasant journey. A pleasant journey? Well, aren't you leaving Vienna? Well, what gave you such an idea? Those bags, for one thing. Oh, I'm, I'm loaning them to Gretchen. They are very heavy, hmm? You're loaning her your clothes, too? Look, Eric... You seem to have developed a fetish for Americans, huh? First Stephen Lorimer, now this new one. What are you talking about? I saw you at the Imperial. Who is he? He's just a tourist. You are lying. I will I... kill you if you don't tell me he's a tourist. I swear. You are going away with him, huh? Aren't you? Eric, Aren't you? Please. Hmm? I, can't, I, I can't breathe. Eric. Eric. <laughs> All right, boy, you can take those bags. You mean you'd actually trust me, Mr. Waring? Who the devil are you? Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Robert Vaughan. Well? It means nothing to you? Should it? I'd hope so. I'm in charge of security for the Soviet sector. Now, look, Vaughan, I'm very busy. I can appreciate it, Mr. Waring, but I'm afraid I must take up your time, perhaps a great deal of it. You know a girl named Trudy Brownheim? No. Well, that's odd. I have it on excellent authority that you met her at the bar of the Imperial today. Well, your excellent authority is wrong. Well, then, of course, it would be of no interest to you that she was murdered. She what? A pity, isn't it? Is that on the level? I can assure you I never jest about murder. I find it in horrible taste. How did it happen? Apparently, she was first choked, but uh, that wasn't the cause of death. Well, what was? This. She was shot twice with it at close range. That's a cold automatic, isn't it? Yes. What do you make of the inscription? For the Falcon, a real straight shooter. Now, if I only knew who or what the Falcon was... Where did you find that gun? Right next to a body. You've doubtless heard something about the Soviet penal system. That's yeah, a great deal. Well, let me congratulate you. You're in a position now to check on it firsthand. I do hope you appreciate the honor. Oh, Willie, please slow down. I'd like the gentleman to see our city. Jawohl. Now on the right, Mr. Waring, is St. Stephen. Lovely, isn't it? The spire is 450 feet high. It's considered one of the finest examples of Gothic. All right, never mind the Cook's tour, Vaughan. I thought you might be interested. It's probably the last time you'll see Vienna. Look, I tell you, you're making a mistake. I didn't kill Trudy Braunheim. But you did meet her this afternoon. You've been talking to El Romano. Who? The bartender at the Imperial. Isn't that where you got your information? And if it is? And he must have told you it was just a pickup. Well, not really, Mr. Waring. You're insulting my intelligence. Trudy Brownheim was working for the American government, as you are. Well, then where's my motive? You were afraid she'd fall into our hands and divulge the names of her associates. <laughs> well, that's pretty cute. Talk about killing two birds with one stone. Pardon? You murdered Trudy and framed me for it. Oh, you're not suggesting... Well, why not? I can build as convincing a case against you as you can against me. Huh. Aren't you forgetting this gun? No, it's not mine. It's inscribed with the falcon. Any local engraver could have done that. 
Let's see it. Uh, now, just a moment. Esther, stop that. You're... All right, Vaughn. Behave yourself. You won't get hurt. <laughs> Are you being childish, Mr. Waring? You wouldn't dare shoot. Well, what have I got to lose? They can only hang me once. Yes, I suppose that's true now. I'll tell your boy to stop the car. Willie, will you please stop right here? Tell him to get out and walk to the corner. You heard the gentleman, Willie. But Herr Vaughan... Uh, don't argue. Now you. <laughs> You're making a serious mistake. Go on, get out. Are you coming with me? Just to get in the front. I figure it's about time I was in the driver's seat. <laughs> it's very amusing. All right, hold it. That's fine. Well, thanks a lot, fellas. I'll be seeing you. I'm sure you will. In the meantime, please take care of that car. It's my pride and joy. Well, Willie, what do you think? I'm constantly amazed at your knowledge of psychology. For a moment there, I was afraid he would not seize the gun. Yes, I was too. Aren't we lucky Americans are so impulsive? How many cars are following him? Three. It's a pity one of them couldn't have stopped and picked us up. Well, looks like we'll just have to take steps. Who is it? Who is it? I'm looking for Eric Hoffman. Yes? Shut the door. You cannot come in here like this. I got a gun that says I can. What's the meaning of this? I'm what they call hot, Eric, real hot. By this time, half the Soviet garrison must be looking for me. Who are you? Mike Waring. Oh. Uh, obviously, it rings a bell. Yes. You were the one Trudy was going away with. How did you know that? She told me so. You're lying. I gave her strict orders to keep her mouth shut. I made her talk. How? I choked her. You what? I don't know what came over me. The, the mere thought that she was deceiving me drove me out of my mind. So you killed her. Oh, no. She finally told me the whole story. I don't believe you. Well, how else would I know that an American known as the Falcon was taking her away, huh? Then what happened? Nothing. I apologized and left. And she was all right then? Yes. Well, who do you think killed her? I have no idea. Ever hear of a man named Robert Vaughan? No. He's a big shot among the Ruskies here. He knew about her work with us. I can't believe it. Trudy was very careful. No one suspected her activities, not even I. Well, she must have slipped somewhere. Where did she hang out? Sometimes at Schnitzler's, but mostly at uh, Imperial. Wait a minute. Huh? You know the bartender there? No. Well, you must have seen him. Tall, thin boy with black hair. His name is Al Romano. I got a hunch he's working for the Reds. See if you can find out where he lives. You expect yes, me? Yes, I do. All you got to do is follow him home. When you find out, give me a jingle. I'll wait here. <laughs> Hey, buddy. Buddy. Uh, yes? Got a match? I think so. Thanks, Eric. How, how do you know my name? What are you beefing about? You know mine? No. Come off it, chum. You've been tailing me ever since I left the Imperial. What? And a pretty lousy job you did, too. You know, if you're shadowing a guy, it don't mean you have to breathe down his neck. I, I don't know what you are talking okay, about. Okay, but just in case you're interested, my name is Al Romano. And I live in Brigitten now, 23 Wallenstein Strasse. But give me a call before you drop by. I'm very seldom home. Quarter to eight. Where the devil can he be keeping himself? He had enough time. Yeah? Mr. Waring? What's a good word, Eric? Uh, I'm afraid I didn't do so well. Didn't you latch on to Romano? Yes, but I was very clumsy. He knew he was being followed. He even knew my name. And that proves he's working for the Reds. Did you find out where he lives? Yes. In Brigitten, our Wallensteinstrasse, number 23. Where exactly is that? On the left bank. Well, I don't suppose the 8th Avenue subway runs out that far. I beg your pardon? Come on, skip it. I'll manage somehow. Thanks for your hospitality, Eric. I'll see you real soon. In, Al. The water's fine. But you might be in over your head. Well, if it isn't Comrade Vaughan. Yes. Fancy meeting me here, eh? Just keep your hands where they are. Oh, now, really, old man, I think you've met this bit for all it's worth. I'm not clowning. Neither am I. 
This building is surrounded by my, what shall we say, henchmen. If you just glance out the window. You see what I mean? Yes, but you're in here and I've got the gun. I hate this illusion, you, Mr. Waring, but it's loaded with blanks. What? Well, after all, I couldn't trust you with live ammunition. You might have hurt yourself. Well, then you let me escape. Of course. I was hoping you'd do exactly as you did. Lead us to all your confederates in Vienna. Well, that's where you're wrong. I'm not working with anyone. No? What about Eric Hoffman? He was just a guy I bumped into. You seem to bump into a lot of people. Eric Hoffman, Tudy Brownheim, and now Al Romano. Well, I can explain that. I wanted to get a recipe from him. He makes the greatest martini... Yeah, so you dropped in unannounced, eh? Well, I didn't think Al would mind. He's from New York, too. I think I'd better tell you something about Mr. Romano. What, that he killed Trudy? What makes you say that? It figured. I got a hunch he's working for you people. And following my orders, he murdered Miss Brownheim? Yes. <laughs> It's a very interesting theory, Mr. Waring. A pity you'll never be able to prove it. You see, Mr. Romano has disappeared. Oh, sure, you took care of that. I wish I had. I just learned he was an agent for your government. He what? It's very clever of your Mr. Brill to plant him at the Imperial. But he got away. Yes. But you didn't. I guess we should be grateful for small favors. However, suppose we discuss it on the drive over to my office. I think you like this car even better than the last. Are you looking forward to a summer vacation or to holiday weekends filled with carefree relaxation? Unfortunately, a lot of us will never have those pleasant plans come true. Yes, for thousands, those dreams will turn into tragic nightmares because of a traffic accident. Plan your trips so that you have plenty of time without speeding. Just remember, excessive speed is the greatest cause of traffic accidents. Observe traffic laws and regulations. Never drive after drinking. Follow those simple rules all the time. The life you save may be your own. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. My mother once told me there'd be times when it didn't pay to get out of bed. Unfortunately, my bed was some 4,000 miles away, and even on a clear day, you couldn't see it from Vaughan's office in the Hofburg. All I saw was trouble ahead. I guess Vaughan had the same view. He looked real pleased about it. You might be interested in knowing, Mr. Wedding, that I've informed your legation we're holding you. What did you do that for? Well, I wouldn't want you, Mr. Brill, to think we'd molest an innocent American citizen. I am innocent. Oh, now, come, Michael. I may call you Michael. Look, I tell you, I didn't kill Trudy Brownheim. Too bad you can't prove it. Well, maybe I can't... Yeah, sure. Why didn't I think of that before? I've got an alibi. I'd love to hear it. How long will it take you to latch on to Trudy's boyfriend? No time at all. <laughs> Willie, will you bring in Eric Hoffman, please? Well, you don't believe in wasting time. Never. I hate loose ends. You expect Eric to give you an alibi, eh? That's exactly what I expect. Oh, come in here, Hoffman. Willie, get the gentleman a chair. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, what, uh, what do you want of me? Oh, do sit down, please. I think you know, Mr. Waring. No. Might as well tell the truth, Eric. They know everything. Yes, we do. They think I killed Trudy. I told them you were my alibi. Me? Well, you know I had no motive. Oh, really, old man, this is getting us nowhere. You said that he could give you an alibi. He can. After I met Trudy, Eric followed her home. He was jealous. He thought she was going away with me. He was right? Yes, but for the wrong reason. He thought it was romance. Especially when Trudy wouldn't talk. So he tried to choke the truth out of her. What? That's how she got those marks on her throat. And I suppose at this point the murderer entered and, finding her unconscious, killed her with your gun. That's exactly how it happened. And uh, where was uh, your alibi, Herr Hoffman, during all this time? I was... Standing right over her. What? Yes, you killed her, Eric. You are insane. You were jealous of me. No. Trudy told me everything about you. How did you know an American called the Falcon was going to take her out of Austria? She told me so. She couldn't have. Nobody over here knows that's my nom de guerre. I knew it. How did you find out? From the engraving on the murder weapon. Well, that's the same way Eric discovered it. Only he handled the gun first. He got it out of my room at the Imperial after he saw Trudy and me together. No, no, that's not true. All right, Willie. Take him away. Come on. I don't mean it. I didn't mean it. I swear I couldn't let her go. I was afraid. Shut up. Willie, 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 Willie. Please, no violence. 
What will our Mr. Waring think? My apologies, sir. That's quite all right. I'm afraid I owe you an apology, too. Skip it. Cigarettes? No, thanks. I've taken all I intend to from you people. Can I go? Oh, but of course. After all, I did notify your legation I was holding you for murder. And when they learn that an Eric Hoffman is guilty, they might send someone around to ask embarrassing questions. I am afraid I was a little hasty. I'm afraid you were. I'll uh, have Willie arrange for your immediate departure for Vienna. You can leave tonight on the Paris Express. I'm in no hurry. I am. <laughs> I think we'll both be happier with you in France. I know I will. Give my regards to Mr. Brill. <laughs> Yeah, what is it? I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Brill, but there's a long-distance call for you. Collect. Collect? Who from? A Mike Waring in Paris. Well, put him on. All right, operator. We'll accept those charges. Hello, that you, Brill? Oh, you got your nerve making a call like this? I just thought you might like to know I got out of Austria all right. Well, you could have dropped me a line. Oh, that's so impersonal. Well, I already got the scoop. Uh, well, I'm leaving for New York in the morning. Uh... Uh, what do you want to do that for? As long as you're in Paris, you might as well make the most of it. I'm sure we can find something for you to do. Now, listen, Brill. I wish I could afford to, but this call is costing the taxpayers money. So just stay close to your phone, huh? You'll hear from me in a week. Have fun, kiddo. The Case of the Menacing Mamsell. The Case of the Menacing Mamsell. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that sometimes a little French miss can do more damage than a French 75. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Joan Alexander as Trudy. This program came from New York. Howard Riggs speaking. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Yvette. I'm glad you called. No, I'm going to stay in Paris for a while, Angel. Mm -hmm. I'm out to prove 50 million Frenchmen can be wrong when it comes to murder. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the menacing Mamzelle. The boy who said good Americans when they die go to Paris must be wrong. Here I am in the city of light and very much alive. Still, you never know. French cab drivers don't get me, there's always a chance someone like Jerry Collier will. Mr. Collier's the good-looking citizen who just checked into the pension on the Rue de Belleville. Obviously, he doesn't believe in traveling light. That's a Colt 45 he's packing. It may look small, but it sure holds a lot of lead. Who is it? The concierge, monsieur. The who? Uh, are you called the janitor? Just a second. Where the devil can I put... Okay, come in. Uh, bonjour, Monsieur Collier. Hi. Uh, permit me to introduce myself. I am Emile Diderot. Glad to know you, Emile. If there is anything I can do to make your stay here enjoyable, you have but to command me. Thanks, I'll remember that. Paris has so much to offer. And Monsieur has seen the Pantheon? Uh, several times. Well, if uh, Monsieur is not interested in dead French men, perhaps live French women would be more to his liking. Look, Emile, I'm busy. I could introduce him to a very charming mademoiselle named... Fleurette Duval. You don't see... What was that name again? Fleurette Duval. She works as a model on the Rue de la Paix. She wouldn't be from the Haute Savoy. 
Monsieur knows her? Yeah. What an amazing coincidence. Don't give me that. You knew I was looking for her. Give you my word, Monsieur Collier. What'd you do, go through my luggage? Pardon? I asked you something. <laughs> Monsieur is very free with his hands. How did you know I was looking for her? My mother was a gypsy. Don't get gay. <laughs> you went through my diary, didn't you? Yes, Monsieur. Where'd she live? Come on, Emile. I'm not clowning. Where does this Florette de Val live? She has a flat in the Pelus d'Evron, number 27. It's right off the Grand Boulevard on the east side, isn't it? Yes, monsieur. Thanks a lot, Emile. You've been a great help. Monsieur has such a forceful personality, I could hardly be otherwise. I look forward to the opportunity to serve him again. <laughs> Monsieur is looking for someone? Yes, an English gentleman with a monocle. Oh, never mind, I see him. Uh, Monsieur Vaughan. My dear Emile. <laughs> Would you care for a brandy? Uh, and some caviar. But a member of the proletariat, your tastes are surprisingly exotic. All right, Gosson. Very good, Monsieur Vaughan. How did it go, Emile? Perfectly. I wouldn't judge so from your appearance. These bruises? They merely indicate how well I played my part with Monsieur Collier. He has no idea how you knew he was looking for Florette Duval? No. He thought I ran across an entry in his diary. Naturally, I said nothing to contradict it. You amaze me, Emile. I do. Yes. How can a man with your talent be satisfied with being a concierge? I'm only too happy to serve the party wherever they think best. And I suppose the 100,000 francs I promised you... Oh, it your... was 200,000, Monsieur. <laughs> I'm quite sure I said 100. Perhaps. But I am sure you would not wish me to go back to Monsieur Collier and tell him how I knew he was looking for Fleuret Duval. In my country, they call that blackmail. What a coincidence, Monsieur. In France, they call it blackmail, too. I like you, Emile. And I'm very fond of you, Monsieur Vaughan. You brandy, Monsieur. Ah, you're just in time. All right, Emile. Let's drink to our perfect understanding. May Mr. Collier find his meeting with Fleuret Duval as profitable. <laughs> Florette Duval? Oui. I'm Jerry Collier. Jerry Collier? Doesn't my name mean anything to you? Of course. You are the American who is going out with Gigi. No, I'm going out with you. I do not understand. Well, I'll make it real easy. Mind if I sit down? Really, monsieur? I'm expecting company. This won't take long. During the war, you lived in Ancy in Haute Savoy, right? Why do you ask? Believe me, I got a good reason. Would you like to see it? Very much. Well, what do you think of this? What? Why the gun? You never heard the name Jerry Collier before? Mm, no. Maybe you'd be more familiar with my brother's. Your brother's name? He had to bail out over occupied France during the war. He landed in Haute Savoy. He was befriended by a family named Duval. Duval? Yeah, they hid him from the Nazis. But uh, what I forgot to mention was that they had a daughter... She was a mercenary young thing. For a small consideration, she turned him over to the Gestapo. Guess what her name was? You give up? It was Florette. And you think I uh -huh. am? Who told you that? Maurice Lafarge. I do not know any such person. Well, he knows you. All right, honey. Anytime you're ready. No, no, no. You are making a mistake. What are you complaining about? You're going to have it a lot easier than my brother. He was tortured first. Uh, I swear I am not the same girl. Are you kidding? Monsieur does not understand. Duval is a very common name in France. It is like like Smith in your country. There were a hundred in haute Savoie. Don't give me that. I can prove it. You said your brother Paul was befriended by this girl's family. Well? Well, I have none. I am an orphan. I was raised at the convent at Chamonix. There on the wall, you can see my diploma. And why was I told Florette Duval was in Paris? She may be. Did you ever think to consult the directory? They are over 50. I, I, I should have thought of that, but when Emile... Emile? Emile Diderot. He's a concierge at the pension where I'm staying. When he mentioned your name, I jumped to the wrong conclusion. 
All I can say is I was stupid. Well, you have said it. Now go. Believe me, I'm sorry. Operator, Alpine 5413. Hello. Jacques, Fleurette Duval. What is it, Fleurette? I thought you might be interested. I just entertained a young American named Jerry Collier. Well? Perhaps entertained is not the right word. He was going to kill me. How did you talk yourself out of it? You know how inventive I can be. Well, I'll take care of Monsieur Collier immediately. You better. I should hate to play this little scene again. Next time, we might not have a happy ending. Yeah. Hello, you uh, Jerry Collier? That's right. My name is Mike Waring. I just moved in next door. Come on in. Thanks. The concierge told me there was a fellow American on this floor. Sit down. Thanks. Drink? Uh, Waring never says no. Did you say your name was Mike Waring? Uh-huh. Seems to me I heard of you in the States. Aren't you the private detective they call the Falcon? Not so loud. I, uh... I wonder if you could help me out. Well, if it entails making like a bird dog, I'm afraid not. I've quit the racket. This would be a cinch. I'm looking for a girl named Florette Duval. <laughs> That's like looking for John Smith in New York. Yeah, so I learned the hard way. I ran into one of them this afternoon, almost got myself in a jam. Well, what happened? It's a long, dull story. Well, I don't mind, as long as your brandy holds out. Well, during the war, my brother wound up in the hands of the Gestapo, thanks to a Florette Duval... I got a tip she was in Paris and living in the Palouse de Vron. Lucky she was the wrong girl. Lucky for whom? Huh? I see you're packing a gun. Yeah. If she hadn't done some fast talking, the gendarmes might be hunting a killer tonight. Well, obviously she was the wrong girl. Yeah, she couldn't possibly have known Paul. She was brought up... Wait a minute. She knew his name was Paul. Well, you probably told her. No, I just referred to him as my brother... She was the one who came up with the name. Now look, Collier. Well, what do you know? She was the right Florette Duval after all. Sorry, Waring, I gotta run. Well, where do you think you're going? To correct a mistake I made. You're out of your mind. I'll be a good kid and stay out of this. Look, if you think I'm going to let you walk out of here and commit murder... That's exactly what I think. Now, get out of my way. Now, don't be a fool, Collier. You're gonna get out of my way? Give me that gun. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, fellow, but you asked me to give it to you. I hope that's what you had in mind. Hello. If I had the pleasure of speaking to Monsieur Robert Vaughan... Is that your idea of pleasure? This is Emile, Monsieur Vaughan. I thought perhaps you might be interested in the latest developments. Always. You are prepared to pay for them? Remember the party, Emile, you show a sordid interest in money? Alas, I am afraid you are right. Shall we say another 200,000 francs? Let's hear your information first. Well, a short while ago, I heard a disturbance in Monsieur Collier's room. When I went to investigate, I discovered a new tenant there, a Monsieur Waring. He was on the floor, unconscious. Well, this Waring chap, uh, his first name wouldn't be Michael. You know him? We met in Vienna last week. He's an American agent? So it would seem. Is he uh, still unconscious? Yes. It might serve our purpose just as well if he uh, never came to. I do not understand. Of course you do, Emil. Would be fairly simple to manage. Two Americans indulge in a drunken brawl. One leaves, the other's found later by the gendarmes with a knife in his chest. Monsieur makes it sound logical, but you, you cannot expect all this for 200,000 francs. You'll be serving the party. Please do not think unkindly of me, but uh, I prefer to serve myself. <laughs> You're a man after my own heart. Shall we say half a million francs? <laughs> when would I collect? Well, don't worry, Emile. You'll get it. You'll get everything that's coming to you. First attend to Mr. Waring. All right.
right, Emil. Oh. What do you think you're doing? Monsieur Wang, you, you startled me. Yes, well, I meant to. What have you got behind your back? Uh, nothing. Uh, Let's see that. No. Well, by you, this is nothing. Well, I can explain the knife. You better. Well, I, I heard a disturbance in Monsieur Collier's room. I, I thought there might be thieves present. Naturally, I, I came prepared to defend myself. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not bad for an ad lib. Monsieur does not believe me. Oh, what a question. How long ago did Collier leave? Perhaps uh, 20 minutes. You suppose he went over to see Florette Duval? Florette Duval? I do not know the name, monsieur. I've got a hunch you know it real well. I don't understand. Well, I'll make sure to explain it later. Right now, I've got a call to make. Get me a cab. I'll be down in a minute. I'd like to see Florette Duval. Oh, but of course, monsieur. Uh, whom shall I say is calling? Mike Waring. Ah. Just uh, follow me, please. You are a friend of Mademoiselle Duval? You might say that. Well, if you will just step in here. All right. I... What's the idea? You wish to see Florette Duval? Is that? Yes. Can I lift the blanket? Allow me. Yes, it, uh, it isn't very pretty, is it, monsieur? Oh, hardly. Well, a forty-five caliber Colt does a great deal of damage. She must have been lovely. You say that as though you had never seen her in life. I didn't. Yet you claim to be her friend. Well, only in a manner of speaking. Permit me to introduce myself. I am Georges Marat. You're the prefect of police? Oh, nothing so impressive. I'm merely a small wheel in the machinery of justice. It would correspond to sergeant in your country. Uh, what do you know of her murder? Nothing. Yet it comes as no surprise to you. Well, I heard someone threaten her. And uh, the gentleman's name? What makes you think it was a man? We have his fingerprints. Now, look, Mara, this isn't as simple as it seems. In... I'm afraid I must insist, monsieur. The gentleman's name? Jerry Collier. Merci. It merely illustrates the harmony that exists between our two countries. I supplied the victim, and you supplied the killer. Believe me, monsieur, France is forever in your debt. Last year, thousands of Americans who tried to get away with carelessness on the highways were killed or permanently injured in traffic accidents. Most frequent causes of such accidents are speed too great for the conditions of the road, failure to keep to the right of the center line, and immoderate drinking by the driver. Studies have shown that there are one or more violations of the law or of safe practice in almost every motor vehicle accident. Encourage driver training in your high schools. Teach your children the rules of safety on the highway. And remember, the life you save may be your own. And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, it merely goes to show that Americans ought to hang together on foreign shores. I'm sure Jerry Collier felt that way especially after I'd arranged for him to hang alone. The next three hours are kind of hectic. First, Mara took me down to the prefecture of police in the Palais de Justice, where I saw how the French do it. And you know something? They do it just like us. In five minutes, they had a dragnet out for Jerry Collier. But I guess they weren't looking in the right places. Because when I got back to my room in the pension, the phone was sounding off. When I picked it up, I was surprised to hear an American accent. After all, it was a French phone. Yeah, I don't have to ask who this is. You're a hot buster. I guess I can thank you for that. Well, I couldn't help myself. Listen, Waring, I swear I didn't kill that girl. You gotta believe me. Where are you now? Near the bridge that goes to the left bank next to Notre Dame Cathedral. Well, it's a miracle you haven't been picked up yet. Now, look, do you know Vera's bar on the Boulevard des Capucines? Why? Well, don't ask questions. Just go there and ask for Vera. She'll take care of you. I'll be by in 20 minutes.
Now, don't you worry, honey. Any friend of Mike's is a friend of mine. Thanks, Sarah. Did he ever tell you about the time right after the war when the two of us... Oh, 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 no, 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 Angel. You're telling tales out of school. Oh. Well, I suppose you two lugs want to be alone, huh? (laughs) Well, I'd appreciate it. Uh, Listen, Vera, if a gendarme should drop around... uh... I don't know from nothing. That's my girl. If you want anything, just holler. Listen, Waring, how well do you know the dame? Vera? She's a legend here. You sure you can trust her? You're missing the point, Collier. The question is, can we trust you? I tell you, I didn't kill Florette. You were on your way over when I last saw you. She was dead when I got there. I didn't even go in the room. I just opened the door and that was enough. Mm-hmm. Did you know that Florette Duval worked for the underground during the war? She still gave my brother away. Where did you pick that up? A man named Maurice Blanc told me. He lives in Haute Savoy and knew the whole story. Tall, heavyset character with a handlebar mustache? Yes. He's a commie agent. What difference does that make? Look, Collier, try to get this through your head. Florette Duval was planted in the Communist Party by people who must be nameless. So? So the comrades discovered it and decided to liquidate her. That's where you came in. I don't get you. Well, you were walking around France ready to commit murder. So they planted a bug in your ear that Florette was the party you were looking for. You mean she had nothing to do with my brother's death? Nothing at all. How do you know so much about this? I was assigned to protect her. You think it was an accident I moved into the same pension with you? I can't believe it. Well, you better. They just intended to use you as an executioner. Only the dirty... Look, who told you Florette lived in the uh, Palouse d'Avram? The concierge at the pension. Emile? Yes. How did he know you were looking for her? I keep a diary. He claimed he saw it there. He was lying. He's a communist agent, too. They just led you around by the nose. I'll get him for this. Uh, haven't you learned your lesson yet? You said that once before. I'm sorry. Well, you should be. Now, you leave Brother Emile to me. Monsieur Wary. Mind if I come in? Uh, I was just leaving. I won't keep you long. I guess you heard about Mr. Collier. All Paris says by this time. He claims you told him where he could find Florette Duval. Me, monsieur? All right, let's stop playing games, Emile. You're working for the comrades. It was your job to see Collier located, Florette Duval. You are mistaken. Who do you take your orders from, Robert Vaughan? How would a humble concierge know a comintern officiel? But you do know he stands high in communist circles. One reads the papers, monsieur. One might, but one never saw it there. Mr. Vaughan hates publicity. Is he in Paris? I do not know what monsieur is talking about. Well, would you for a thousand dollars? Now monsieur is talking my language. Where is the money? I'll have it for you in an hour. Then in an hour I shall be glad to assist you. Au revoir, monsieur Waring. I look forward to your return. You worrying, I believe. What are you doing here, Mara? Or shouldn't I ask that of a police official? Oh, please do. Where's Emil? Where would you naturally expect to find him? Is that the same blanket you used to cover Florette Duval? Alas, Monsieur, France is poor. We must be economical. Mm-hmm. Can I see him? Oh, I insist on it. Well, now I know what they mean when they say right between the eyes. Was it the same gun? Monsieur is in the best position to know. What are you getting at? Ask yourself this question. In the last 12 hours, there have been two murders in Paris, and each time you appear on the scene. How do you account for it? Just lucky, I guess. Yes, but no one's luck can last forever. May I see your hands? Now, look here. Please, oblige me. Well, if you're looking for powder marks, that... Merci, monsieur. Hey, what's the idea of the handcuffs? Merely a precaution. You seem to know Paris so well, it might occur to you to take French leave. Shall we go? You and your children can expect to live long thanks largely to better medicine and surgery. But you could expect to live even longer were it not for the danger of automobile accidents. If driver education could be taught in all of our high schools instead of only one-third of them, 
it might someday help to save the life of your own son or daughter. If your schools don't have these courses, demand driver education for your children. And in your own automobile, remember to drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. If you're planning a trip to Paris this summer, let me tip you off about the Palais de Justice. Go out of your way to miss it. France is no place to see through iron bars. One look convinced me I ought to tell Mara about my work as an American agent. Well, he was properly impressed. He phoned the embassy. Uh, I see. And I must have told him plenty. There's no question in All your of mind. it bad. Well, I'm very much obliged for your help. Well, it will no doubt come as a shock to you, Monsieur Waring, that your embassy... Knows nothing of my activities. Well, they warned me if I got into a jam and have to get myself out. Ah, what a pity. Now, look, I tell you, I didn't kill Emile Diderot. No, Fleuret Duval, I suppose. No. Then who do you think did? Why don't you ask Vaughan? Pardon? Robert Vaughan. He's the one who made the wheels go. Emile was working for him. Well, then why should he kill him? Emile was going to sell him out. If you'd only pick him up... Uh, but we already have. What? Unfortunately, we were compelled to release him. He had an excellent alibi. Oh, sure. He was at the Soviet embassy when Emile was killed. How did you guess? I'm psychic. You don't believe him, do you? Well, can you prove that he is lying? Yeah, wait a minute. Maybe I can. But I'm going to need Jerry Collier's help. Oh, unfortunately, that raises a problem. Oh, no, it doesn't. You know where Monsieur Collier is? I ought to. I took him there. Get a car and I'll do as much for you. Oh, uh, excuse me, fellas. I gotta say hello to an old friend. Hi, Vera. What have they done to you, sweetie? Not a thing. Well, if you're trying to start a new fad with those iron bracelets, forget it. I don't think it'll catch on. Uh, oh, uh, Vera, this is Inspector Mara of the prefecture. Enchanté, madame. Hmm. Likewise, I'm sure. Yeah, we've come for Jerry Collier. Why? You know, the boy... Oh, uh... yeah, I know. You're turning him in? I don't have much choice. Well, they say you learn something new every day, but this is kind of a shock. I never took you for a rat. I'm sorry, Angel. Is he still in the back? Mm -hmm. All right, Mara, let's go. Your friend seems disillusioned. I can't say I blame her. Here? Yeah. That you, Vera? No, it's me, Carly. Who's he? The cop. Why, you dirty... I couldn't help myself. They had me pegged as the killer. You? Yes. I guess I'm selfish, but... I'm kind of attached to this neck of mine, and I'd hate to give it up to the guillotine. Uh, correction, monsieur. We hang you now. Not me. Collier's going to bail me out. How? Remember me telling you about that Robert Vaughan character? The commie? Yeah. Well, it now develops he has a cast-iron alibi. I get this. He claims he was at the Soviet embassy when Emil was killed. You mean Emil, the concierge? Uh-huh. When did that happen? Well, if you don't know, no one does. After all, you murdered him. You know what you're saying? I think so. You're out of your mind. Where's my motive? You felt he was responsible for your killing Fleurette Duval. And I suppose he was. You're crazy. I told you she was dead when I got there. Yeah, that's what you told me. You also said you didn't go into her apartment the second time. Well, I didn't. I just stood in the doorway. Then uh, how could you see the body? It was in the bedroom. You see my point? Five will get you ten. He's still got the gun on him. You're darn right. <laughs> All right, both of you. Stay where you are. Don't be a fool, Carl. Let me have it. You asked for it once before. Remember what happened? Yeah, but I think your luck's run out. I'm warning you. Monsieur Waring. It's all right, Mara. He wouldn't dare shoot. No. Didn't fire. Yes, but mine will. Shall I demonstrate, or will you take my word for it? I cannot get over it, Monsieur Waring. Such fortitude, such courage. I have never seen the like of it in my life. Who are you talking about? You? Oh. The way you walked up to Collier when he had that gun pointed directly at you was most impressive. 
There's nothing, Mara. Oh, nothing, he calls it. I know whereof I speak. How many shells does a Colt 45 hold? Six. How many slugs did you find in a meal? Three. And in Fleuret? The same number. Well, there you are. Three and three make six. I knew Collier's gun had to be empty. But he could have reloaded after the murders. Huh? Uh, but, of course, uh, with your knowledge of criminal psychology, <laughs> you figured on that. You want to know something? I never even thought of it. Good night, Inspector. <laughs> Bonsoir! <laughs> The Case of the Babbling Brooks. The Case of the Babbling Brooks. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon. When Mike Waring learns that even though blood is thicker than water, it sometimes is a lot easier to spill. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake. Produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon, with Helen Coulet as Florette. Others in the cast were Ralph Bell, Betty Gard, Ken Lynch, Brett Morrison, and Everett Sloan. This program came to you from New York. This is Fred Collins speaking. <laughs>